And it is time for a Friday Reads video. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you my Friday Reads. In my Friday Reads, I share the books that I finished, the books I started, and anything interesting about books that I'm carrying over week to week. And I have... Oh, I might not have any carryovers. I actually did do a real big push to finish stuff by the end of the month. And I failed at the end of the month, but I succeeded on finishing a bunch of stuff on the first and the second. So I'm going to take that as a win. We're going to start with the finishes. Um, first up, I started or I finished another book from, from the um, Molaire collection of plays that I am reading. And I read uh, Tartuffe or The Hypocrite. And, um, oh, no, The Imposter. Who's The Hypocrite? They call him a hypocrite at the beginning. I think his, his character description is hypocrite. I feel need to be justified in understanding. Tartuffe, a hypocrite. It's true, I didn't make it up. Hypocrite. <laughs> anyway, so um, this one is a bit more serious than the other two that I read, which was The Misanthrope and um, The Sicilian. The Sicilian or Love the Painter. So Tartuffe is about um, a family where the father is really taken with this guy, Tartuffe, and um, he lets him into his life, lets him stay in his house with all his family, and everyone else in the family is like, this guy is just bad news. What are you doing? He's like, but he's wonderful. He's just so great. Don't you, don't you love him? Don't you, all of these things, isn't he wonderful? To the point where his daughter is promised uh, to uh, a man and he's like, why don't you marry Tartuffe instead? <laughs> so it's just like, and everyone's like, why do you, like, why are you so taken with Tartuffe? And, but it does get more serious as things progress. And I was kind of like, whoa. And it's kind of one of those ones where I'm really curious to see a stage production of this because I felt like it got really serious, but I don't know. The other two do have such a comedy sort of playful element to them that I don't know if that would be like, um, if it would read at more as comedy or read more as serious at a certain point in the play. I did really enjoy it, but I the other two I enjoyed more. I'm looking forward to continuing on. I was hoping to finish this whole collection by the end of August. That didn't happen. Next up is a doctor in spite of himself. So we'll see what happens with that doctor. It's only three acts. So hopefully, maybe I can even finish both by next week. That would be wonderful. Um, I also finished my first on my TBR of the month and I started it early. Um, and that's Cat Got Your Diamonds by uh, Julie Chase. Um, I read this because uh, Nicole from Who Picked This Book and Jen Jen are reading through the four books in this series um, over at Nicole's channel and the live show was on Wednesday the 2nd. So I was like, I, I need more than a day to read it. So I started it last week and then finished it a bit early. Um, and it's a cozy mystery, if you couldn't tell by the cover, and follows at set in New Orleans, it follows a woman who runs a store that has pet couture. So, um, uh, clothes, I was going to say costumes, but sometimes they're costumes and sometimes they're clothes um, for pets. And she also does pet treats. Um, and But then there is a murder and she is a suspect. And then, you know, walks in the, the detective who... She's not seeing as swoony, but like, honestly, he's swoony. So what's going on? Anyway, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed going to the live show. And I'm really looking forward to reading the next one in the series. They're doing the live shows are on Wednesday nights. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I don't read a lot of cozy mysteries, so I am sort of out of my comfort zone. I always think the, the person that they last talked to is the person who did it. So it kept me guessing. <laughs> but I am, as I said, it's not a genre I read a lot, but it was a lot of fun. So I am really glad that I read that. And then we get to a bit of a complicated title. This was way more complicated than I thought. So The Bridges of Madison County by Robert James Waller. Holy smokes. Okay, so I know this book from when it came out. I was working at bookstores at the time. I sold so many copies of it over the years, and uh, and I've seen the film. So I know what the story is. So I kind of knew what I was getting into. It is a... Uh, the, the the film is a drama romance, and it's sort of a romance. It doesn't follow the parameters of what we consider a romance. My Goodreads review talks about 
what that is, but they are spoilers, so I'm not going to get into that here. Um, and But it follows two people. I think, I'm trying to remember if she's 30 and he's 40, or she's 40 and he's 50. I cannot remember. Um, and uh, so it follows a photographer who's uh, to take some um, photos of bridges in Madison County, um, and he meets a farmer's wife. And things go from there. So that's not where the complicated bit is. Although I gotta say, like for me reading this, I did really feel like his character seems to be well, well developed, but like also really the focus, like she, like he's supposed, he's presented as like a poet and artistic and enlightened and you know, sees the world in a way and talks about the world in a way that nobody else does and isn't he wonderful, but then he also doesn't have like any strong relationships. People at his, he works for National Geographic, people that he worked for feel like he's good, he gets the job done, he can do anything, but he's a bit, you know, he's a bit of a, not a loner, but he's just a bit curt, you know, and it's like, Really? I'm like, those two images to me don't go together. And the woman in it, Francesca, she s seems like she's really there to reflect back at how awesome he is. Like, I felt like we do not get much about her. And although we do get some of her backstory and stuff, and, and there is some stuff, but most of what we learn and most of the time about her is about her looking at him, thinking about him, being with him, reflecting back to him about him. Like, it just felt, to me, it felt a bit weird. Like, I felt like I didn't get a sense of her personality. Like, she could have been anyone. And there's a word, I don't know what it is. It's not, I don't know if it, if it's a foil. I don't think that's it. Um, or, or a cipher. Like, her character seemed almost like a blank slate. And maybe that's intentional because it really is focused on how awesome he is. And I'm like, I don't actually think he's really that awesome. So I don't know if it's just a timing thing. I am glad, I actually am glad that I waited to read this till I was a bit older. I don't know how I would have received it reading it at the time. I do still think the movie is great. But so there's all that. So I thought the book was like, okay, basically. <laughs> but the beginning of the book, the beginning. The beginning of the book, called The Beginning, which I skipped. I don't know how I had the foresight to skip it. It said summer 1991, which is before it was written. And it's set mostly in the 60s, I think. Um, so I knew that that was sort of like a, like a foreword or something. It states that this is based on a true story. Now, this edition is from 92, when it was published. So... It states it was a true story, and it isn't. According to Wikipedia, it is all fiction. So I am like, I, I do not like that. That is deception. That is deception. It's not okay. The author talks about how people came to him with this story based on people in their life, and that they read his books, and they wanted him to bring this story from nonfiction onto the page. And I'm like... One, I have a complicated um, reaction to narrative nonfiction. So I went, when I read the beginning, the beginning, the beginning, uh, I had a complicated reaction because I'm like, wow, this is such an intimate story that I don't necessarily feel like it is proper, even with the consent of, you know, the people involved to publish it. And then it, it's not implied that that actually is the case. Um, and then to find out it's actually fiction, fiction. So I'm like, what? what and it's a huge bestseller like I think it's on I don't I don't know it's on lots of lists but it, it like it was it was the biggest selling book at the time like so I feel tricked you know and I had quite a time in the time in which I thought it was narrative nonfiction to when I found it was it was fiction I was wrestling with the moral dilemma of learning about this story you know that was people's real lives here and then it turns out it wasn't so I I I dinged it a whole star for that, and I feel really complicated about that. So, and it's not technically a romance. I did read it for the end of the Summer Fling for my romance reading. I'm, I'm still counting it for that. I'm not going to take out the numbers for that. Um, it's, you know, it's intended 
although it doesn't necessarily format to what we consider romance, it is about their relationship. That is 100% what it is about. It's about the relationship and their emotions. So if you're going to place that in romance versus literary fiction, that's an individual decision. But I just place it in hogwash because <laughs> seriously. So let me know, do you, does that bother you at all? Like, do you, like, I often feel sometimes people react to that. Like, of course it isn't real. I'm like, how would you know? Like, I take things on face value. Like, if, if someone says it's true, why would you, why would you think they're lying? <laughs> I don't like deception. <laughs> I don't like it at all. So anyway, that was very, I think that's the last thing that I finished and it's put me in a bit of a rut because I am not very happy about it. So, but I have continued to read stuff. I have continued to read stuff. Um, I am the, uh, what's the, I also from my September TBR and hopefully an actual romance. I'm not sure. I'm only halfway through. Um, I'm reading A Viking's Promise by Elizabeth Rose. This is a historical Viking romance. It's not super romancy and the prologue was like 27%. 27% was the prologue and um, it's a novella so it's only 100 pages. I should finish this pretty soon. So far I gotta say I'm not super loving it. I feel like some of the it's not super embracing some of the Viking traits and, um, you know, uh, things that I've seen in other works and read up on in terms of philosophies or, you know, tactics or not tactics, I wouldn't say that, um, but just attitudes. That being said, the protagonists that it follows are quite young, so it might be a little bit of that, but so far I'm just, I'm not, I gotta say, I'm not loving it, um, but I'm only halfway through. There is still hope that it will turn a corner and be an awesome romance. Um, I'm also, I just, just started Cat Got Your Cash, which is the second book in the Kitty Couture series by Julie Chase, and I will be reading this for the live show that will be next Wednesday, which is the 9th, I believe. I will link down below for that. Um, what else? Is there more on here? Oh, okay. So, and I'm also continuing to read So You Want to Talk About Race. Um, I've read the section on intersectionality, intersectionality and privilege. It's a really good read. Highly recommend reading that. Um, I also did start from my September TBR, The Essential Art History by Paul Duro and Michael Greenhawk. This is taking me a long time. This is really... A lot of little writing. I've been reading four pages a day and that is effort. I am looking forward to getting to the actual A to Z. I'm just, right now, I'm reading the introduction and it's a bit of a slog. It's like the history of art history and it's dry. It's dry, <laughs> but I, I will get there. I will get there. Okay, on to some funner stuff, hopefully. I love art history, not dissing it. I'm just, I just want to get to A. <laughs> That's the goal. Um, I'm also going to be starting at Cinderman by Anne Stewart. This is a paranormal romance-ish something, maybe science romance, science fiction romance from the 90s in this More Than Men series that I read a book from earlier this year and it was just fabulous, although it had some problematic elements given the time it was written. Um, I think this one has something to do with like, like it's like Firestarter, like a science experiment gone wrong. That's what it feels like to me, Cinderman. I don't know. I'm going to be starting that. I'm going to finish A Viking's Promise first. Um, then I'm also going to be reading Sorcerers um, by Maurice Broadus. This is a urban fantasy illustrated novella. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. And then also, oh, I am continuing Vampire Night. I did finish one volume this week. And so I'm going to, I'm trying to get to... I'm around volume 12 or 13 and I'm just trying to read a few more so that I'm prepped for the Fall Into Manga Love readathon later this month. I want to finish the series this month so I just have to keep on it and uh, I didn't love volume 12 though. It had some elements I was not happy with including someone being like, please forgive me for forgive me for making you have to, constraining you in, in these particular areas and I'm like, it's not okay. Okay, but I'm more than halfway done. I'm gonna see it through and um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then, are there, is there more? Is that it? That's it. Actually, that's it. So I think that's enough. Um, so yeah, I'm starting off the month with some shorter works, except for this 300 page, four page a day or... Um, I did also start back doing some visual reading tracking, which I haven't... I resisted all year, folks. I resisted all year, but... I have resisted no longer. So this is my 
I've always, I haven't updated it yet, yet. So these are my September TBR or September starts. My September color is going to be purple. So it's very, very light purple. Um, my late August editions were all pink. I finished most of them. And then anything, anything from, from prior to that is blue. I filled out on this page and I will be updating that. And I will share it on Instagram. And so far, I've only done one day in September because I'm behind. So September 1st was a very, very, very successful reading day because I read over 300 pages. A bunch was Vampire Night. A slanted lines means a graphic novel or manga, so visual work. So, yes, so that is how my reading is going. Let me know how you your reading is going. Let me know how you feel. Have you read Bridges of Madison County? Did you know it was... Did you think it was nonfiction or fiction, if you read it or not? And also, let me know your thoughts on narrative nonfiction, because I am hard on it. I do not respond well to it, um, <laughs> and I've not had much luck with it. I just, I am so skeptical. It's weird. I can be deceived easily, apparently, but when I know that there could be, that it's a little, it's not, it, it's not, I don't know. Anyway, obviously I have complicated feelings about it, but I'm curious as to if people enjoy it. I have a hard time trusting um, that what, I, what I'm reading is, is true, because like, how does the person know? Because they're adding the narrative elements. I like fiction and nonfiction very separate from each other. Separate. Peas and carrots. Peas and carrots. Okay, that is what I've been reading this week. Let me know what you're up to this weekend. Um, this has been a bit of a bumpy start to September. I have lots of titles on my September TBR, but I think I'm going to start some of them this week and just keep on keeping on. So take care and happy reading.